What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hope this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a doctor working in London and a previous biomedical science graduate. And the reason why I said that the last part is that today's video is all about uh, biomedical science and what you can do once you graduate from that degree. And I have a very special guest here today with me who is Caroline. So Caroline is my girlfriend, if you guys didn't know. And this is probably your second or third bit time being on the channel, right? Yeah, third, I think. Third, yeah, third time. But today, we're not gonna be talking about the last topics we talked about. We're gonna be talking about the topic of biomedical science and what you can do afterwards. The reason why I wanted to bring Carol onto the channel is she's way more uh, better and knowledgeable on the topic of biomedical science. So if you're someone who's studying biomedical science or thinking about studying biomedical science, there's no one better than her to come on here and tell you guys a bit about what biomedical science is, what she did, and what you can do basically after completing biomedical science. So I've been talking for, for quite a long time. Do you want to tell us, Caroline, about who you are and like basically how you got to this stage in uh, yeah in your life. Hi guys, yeah, my name is Caroline. Right now I'm working in publishing, so uh, I'm a research integrity specialist and I work for mm -hmm. uh, an oncology journal, which is mean cancer biology. And my job is to uh, review scientific articles just to make sure that, for example, you know, if they meet the ethic requirements, you mm -hmm. know, uh, doing data analysis if their data um, not you know if the data are correct and there's no any mistakes mm -hmm. uh, just making sure that the paper it's is clear and ready to be published okay yes, that's my so job. so breaking that bit breaking that, that down a bit further because you may be 16 year old you may not understand all of the scientific terms so let's say I'm a scientist in a lab right and I want to produce data in a lab and let's say I'm, I'm a cancer scientist and I do experiments in a lab. Before this research gets published in a scientific article, it has to, there has to be like a middle ground, right? It's not a simple case of doing an experiment, typing it up on your laptop and sending it and immediately it's published. These articles and these experiments, they need to reach like a minimum standard of excellence, essentially. Yeah. And that minimum standard goes through Caroline and Caroline's the one who says, have they met the minimum standard? Are there ethical principles in line? Is someone else in the scientific field able to rep, uh, reproduce or replicate the, the experiment they had to produce the same results? Caroline's basically that person that makes sure that these people are meeting that mm -hmm. minimum standard um, that is required in order to publish a scientific article. Okay, cool, so I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to the next question, which is why didn't you go into lab work? Because a lot of people, including myself when I did biomed, you know, a lot of us think you do biomed and you go work in a lab and you go do research and that's all you can do. So why didn't you go into lab work yourself? Why did you go into like a different field? Well, during my undergrad okay. biomed, since like starting from second year, I used to mm -hmm. work, uh, you know, I got work experience in different fields, you know, like you know, not even science stuff, just like mm -hmm. retail, nanny, you know, um, doing campus tour, uni, uh, being a tutor, all those little jobs. Mm -hmm. And then obviously when I finished my biomedical degree, I got a job in the lab to work um, as a scientist just yeah. to carry out COVID tests, like the PCR tests. So in the summer, so, of, after graduating from biomed, in yeah. the summer before starting a master's, yeah, before you got the job in yeah. a PCR lab. Yeah. So what were you doing? What were you doing in, the, in that job? Just carrying out COVID tests. Okay. PCR, yeah. So PCR for COVID tests. Okay. Yeah. So I did that for a couple of months. I don't mm -hmm. even remember. Um, mm -hmm. And that kind of like gave me a lot of like a good perspective what mm -hmm. a, a real lab would be like. It was a huge company. You know, some of the work well with the NHS. So I kind of saw what a lab would be like. And I also knew that I didn't, I, I couldn't take a, a sandwich year to go do a placement for a year and work my portfolio because um, you have to do like IBMS registration if you mm -hmm. want to become like a registered biomedical scientist. I didn't have that. I couldn't afford it to, you know, to to take a year out and just trying to find a lab that I can fund it or they will fund it myself. You know, and also during my degree, I did a lot of lab work, a lot mm -hmm. of little projects every now and then, the station. I was a student assistant, so I used to help like first and second years in the labs. So I did get quite a good insight of what would be like a lab. Mm -hmm. And also- so why, not, so why didn't you do it? Yeah, the reason why I didn't want to do it is because I, I didn't enjoy the, the work ethic that is inside the lab. And mm -hmm. I guess because the COVID lab was very busy, we had like a time frame on what mm -hmm. to carry out the tests and it was a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. And and I feel like when I'm a lot of stress and a lot of pressure, I used to make like very silly mistakes. Mm -hmm. And because it's very practical, you can easily make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, things in the lab cost a lot of money. So I remember the manager getting super stressed out. Mm -hmm. It was just not in a nice environment. I stayed for a while just because the pay was really good. Mm -hmm. But I, since that day, I 100% knew, oh my God, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. um, Fair enough, I'm not, yeah. yeah. I think, I think 
certain people have certain attributes or personalities. And I think when you enter biomed, you either know immediately that you like lab work or you don't like lab work. So for me in particular, I after doing biomed, I carried on doing lab work in medical school. And I did around maybe three or four years of lab work. And I, and I personally really, really enjoyed lab work because it, it was probably very different to what you did. I was working like in the lab and I was doing research. Um, it was a lot more slow paced and I, I guess I had my own sort of time. And I really, really enjoyed lab work. Not as much as medicine, I'd probably say. Mm. Uh, and I knew that long term down the line, I didn't want to be a scientist, like a lab scientist. But I think you, you, you know, you know, early on, this is not to like discourage anyone from doing lab work, but I think you know from a pretty early stage whether or not you want to go into like a lab and do like wet work mm. or do more, you know, computer stuff or data analysis or whatever it might be that's outside of a lab. Yeah, right? I also had experience where in a research while, while I was doing my master's like mini projects, I, mm -hmm. I got to speak with PhD students and see their perspective of what it's like working in the lab because I was considering after my master's doing PhD, but obviously I just through the experience I've seen, I didn't really enjoy it mm. as much. And it was a research field, very calm, not stressful at all, but I didn't really like it. I didn't see, it takes a long time for you to see results when you work in research. Yeah, yeah. And it takes a lot of um, mistakes and I just feel Maybe I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't passionate enough to, yeah. to go into lab. I think that's why it's important to do both, to have experience of both, have experience in doing lab work and knowing what it's like to, you know, be pipetting all day and doing experiments all day. And also know what it's like to do other stuff, which, you know, might not be involved with lab and be on your, on your, on your laptop. Okay. So let's move on to the next question. Okay, so when you kind of knew that, you know, lab work wasn't for you, what sorts of things can you go into having a biomed degree? So obviously lab work is one of them. So you can talk yeah. a bit about that as well. But what are the sorts of career options you had when you were doing your research? So obviously I'd uh, either do a PhD, the next one would have been just working in the lab as a, re a research assistant and hopefully you build yourself up, up in the lab. Was that, was that part um, of a PhD or was that separate? No, that's separate. That's just a job, research assistant. So you, okay. you work in research with, with a scientist that is doing their research and you just become the assistant. So you do whatever they ask you to do. And if you get into a good lab, then you can work yourself up. Mm -hmm. and and get different position like a, a senior scientist mm -hmm. and you just get more work or work with companies that carry out different experiments or work with the NHS as okay. well as a medical laboratory assistant. Okay, so um, research assistant is definitely like definitely one that's up there I think a lot of people go into. Yeah. The first thing you mentioned was PhD. So I think broadly speaking, further study. So whether that's doing a master's like Caroline did uh, or going into a PhD or doing medicine or dentistry or another degree, I think one broad classification is further study yeah. and then second being research assistant. Research assistant, then you can be a medical editor okay. and that's more in to you know just working in your laptop editing so some companies they require scientists to to mm -hmm. write them you know uh, articles or anything like that so that's more like medical writing, it's medical another, writing. One, okay. another one would be you can become a teacher, you can go into teaching training, mm -hmm. that's a good point. Uh, biology or chemistry, primary teacher. A lot of my teachers in, in the college were, yeah, came from after doing degrees yeah. and PhDs and or just biomed by itself actually. Yeah, my biology teacher came after a master, so. Okay, and I think that's probably the, the kind of vibe that I got as well when I was looking into what other options I had after, after doing biomed. So I think broadly speaking, obviously we can't go into too much detail in each area, but firstly was uh, further study. So whatever that might be, for me that was medicine, for you, that was your master's. Mm -hmm. Secondly was just teaching in general, whether that's being a teacher at primary school, secondary school, or uh, being a teaching assistant. Third is, I wanna broadly classify that as going into the industry. So industry work, basically the scientific industry. So which is doing what you did. So going into medical writing, you can go into um, bioinformatics, data analysis. There's loads of industries of value, you know, having a biomed degree. And we'll talk a bit later on in the video about how to actually look into what job are available in that area of industry. Yeah. And the last one being uh, a laboratory assistant. So a lab assistant at a university. And I think the final thing also you did mention was like be being a biomedical scientist in a hospital. That's, oh, yeah. that's super, I think, common. As a doctor every single day, I need to request lab, uh, lab tests and all these special tests, which are all done by biomedical scientists in a hospital as well. So that's something to also look into. Okay, so now that we've briefly touched upon those broad points about where you can go to, um, let's now talk about the more difficult topic, which is how do you actually go about getting a job? So you've done the degree or you're on your final 
final year, how do you actually, you know, find a job and, and get some money? Yeah, so the first thing, obviously, you need to uh, work on your CV. Okay. And how I did that, I my first year of uni, I went to a lot of workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, they provided us with um, on how to build your CV and how to work on your LinkedIn, mm -hmm. all those little things that quite help. Yeah, oh, and on that point, uh, uh, we'll leave a link down below uh, for a CV template if you want to check out um, how to actually write a CV for Biomed. Um, and the next thing, it's work on your LinkedIn. That's mm -hmm. where I found most of my jobs. Just making sure as soon as you know, whenever you can, just write everything on your LinkedIn. Your LinkedIn will be your online CV. Mm -hmm. So uh, people will actually come for you for jobs. Mm -hmm. If you write, you know, if you ever, all the work experience you have done, if you write it down there, all the studies you have done. So I think LinkedIn really helps. Mm -hmm. so, um, so pretty much everything you've done, including like your, your dissertation, internships you did, any funding you got, I think LinkedIn, from yeah. what you've said, sounds super, super important. How important is it on that LinkedIn point? How, how important is it to, you know, post on LinkedIn and kind of stay interactive? The reason is, is because recruitment companies, they will, they will always be on LinkedIn trying mm -hmm. to find people that match their requirement of the job that mm -hmm. they're trying to find people for. What LinkedIn does, if you, if you go to the settings and, and put the, you know, everything you want to do, mm -hmm. all the jobs you want to do, like, so there's recruitment companies, they will see your name and they will directly contact you for a message. That's what mostly happened to me. Mm. Uh, another way to find a job is through this website called Indeed. Mm -hmm. You write what, you know, for example, I, I was mm -hmm. trying to find a job in research, in research. So I just put like research and a field trip for remote. That's what I wanted. Remote what, working. Mm -hmm. Remote working, yeah. That's mm -hmm. what I want. And it came all of that. And then mm -hmm. you can also sign up so they can send you directly emails to your, I mean, they can send emails to your email, your personal email address and that with the specific job you're looking for mm -hmm. and that was great because every day I used to get emails and I used to look I used to save the job and I knew that by the end of the week I wanted to apply to that job obviously you need time you need to write the cover letter mm. and read the description and everything of the job so that's pretty much what I did so first was attending workshops a university so I learned how to write a CV mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have to be all of them just attend one it really helps mm -hmm. and then work on your LinkedIn and yeah use this website indeed there's so many other web websites that you can use and just register yourself so they can like send emails to you with the jobs mm -hmm. and last thing as well I asked my supervisors back at uni for some help some advice if they will read my cover letters before I submit the you know the application so all those little things I think kind of helps and what I would say as well is use the resources that you have available to you. So when I was uh, thinking about applying for biomedical science jobs, the first thing that I did is I emailed all of my supervisors at my university and I let them know that I'm looking for an opportunity. And even with you, like I think you had that as well. Um, you know, Caroline had an opportunity at her university for her biomed or research assistant, was it? Lab uh, assistant? No, it was a, a graduate assistant. So graduate assistant, yeah. yep. So that worked out. Uh, I had opportunities to do PhDs and further study. So use the, you know, the knowledge that you have and the research resources you have and maybe people in your university including your supervisors your personal tutor mm -hmm. can give you some recommendations on where to go searching okay fine so let's say you applied to a job you've done the cv you've done the cover letter you made the application what comes next after that do they immediately give you the job or do you get interviewed or is there you know what, what's the kind of process after that generally speaking at least from your experience so it was a long wait like mm. around three weeks to hear back from jobs. Okay. Obviously got rejection, got a couple of interviews. So yeah, first, you know, you either hear from them say that you got an interview, they offer you an interview or they rejected you. You go through the interview. I had two interviews phases. So you had phase one, phase two. Okay. Um, so phase one was just really uh, introducing myself to the recruitment comp, like to the recruitment lady that was recruiting mm. me, like a quick interview about myself and just making sure I meet all the requirements of the job. Okay. Then once she was happy with that, then we, then I had a meeting, like an interview with two of the managers of the what, the place where I work now. Okay, <coughs> fine. And, and is that like a chatting interview or is it like a, you know, what do they do in an interview? So it's, it, yeah, they start with chatting, getting to know yourself, what you do. Okay. And then they start asking questions about just work ethic and how you would, uh, kind of like a test, like how would you approach the situation? Mm -hmm. You know, can you give us examples? So it was like around like an hour and a half, quite long, the, okay. the final one. Okay. So the final one is what makes the decision that you gain the job and not so. And I know it, it can be like quite competitive sometimes getting a mm -hmm. job after biomed. So when would you recommend they start applying for jobs? Because like for me, I was applying for medical school at the beginning of my third year, so a year in advance. How early should they, you know, start applying for you know jobs? I worked on my LinkedIn when I was in year two. That really helped just to, to just get used to the LinkedIn mm -hmm. and how it works and how to get jobs. Okay. Obviously, I I got this this job as 
the COVID job because it was during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I then went to do my master's and during my master's, I was just tutoring um, the whole time. So I, will, I can only say from a perspective, I'll do my master's. From my master's- well, I think it applies for both, isn't it? Whether you're in yeah. biomed or your master's, how early on should you start applying for these for these jobs? Yeah, true. So I would say nine months before you finish your degree. That's what I did. Okay. So the reason why I say that is because I got some time to settle in from September, you know, you get mm. settled down. And then you just, after that, you just like look for jobs every single day. To summarize, so, don't wait till the end. Spend your second year of biomed, getting your CV together, writing in your LinkedIn, getting your LinkedIn all up to date. Mm -hmm. Maybe you make an account with your LinkedIn, make an account on uh, Indeed as well. Start having a look about you know what sort of job you want to apply to. And then nine months before you finish and graduate, then you should start applying slowly and hopefully hearing back so that when you graduate, you already um, you know have a guaranteed job. So I think you you, pro you I think you definitely had a job offer before you even graduated, right? Yeah. The reason why I say look nine months ahead of time before you're mm. graduating is because in your final year, or you know, if, even if you do a biomed or a master's, it can be very headache and you have a lot to write, a lot of things to do. You have a dissertation on the table, so you don't want to like feel so stressed and overwhelmed because I knew those things were coming. So I want to prevent, you know, the stress and the anxiety. That's why I start looking nine months before. Mm. And I think, yeah, I think that that for me worked um, the best. And also you don't want to like it graduate and not have mm. a job after a couple of months you enjoy yourself with summer and stuff you you kind of want to do something new yeah and yeah. yeah that's that's my okay opinion. next question let's move on to which is and i'll start off talking maybe on this side what can you do to increase your chances of getting a job and yeah i'll, I'll start the conversation off that's all right because i did quite a little bit uh, of stuff when i was in my biomed degree and i think the main point really is to try your best to make yourself as valuable uh, as possible and what i mean by that in the job market is do things throughout your biomed degree so for me personally what i did was um, in my second year uh, of my summer of my second year i did a eight week placement in the lab so i asked one of um you know i sent loads of emails out basically and uh, to the lab in my university i got a lab project for eight weeks i worked on that i got funding from the welcome trust and they, so they gave me money to actually do that project and that looked amazing on my cv uh, another thing i did as well is i, I attended conferences my research that i did in the lab was accepted at a conference and i actually was able to present my work at a conference and that looks really, really amazing uh, on my CV. And you know, those small things really help with your application. Uh, and finally, as well as that, I also uh, was working giving open days at my university. So even though it's nothing big, it's nothing science related, it still was a job that I was able to talk about um, regarding you know showing people around in my university. So that was my story. How about you? What sort of things do you think you can do with just increasing your chances to actually secure a job? I think do any job that you you know, comes available to you because at the end of the day, it's the, mm. the skills that you build, then you can talk about it. You know, even if it's retail, you know, I worked for retail when I was younger mm -hmm. in an ice cream shop. Uh, I literally worked any, everywhere. So like as a nanny. So all those things really build like skills. And obviously when I got to uni, I mm -hmm. got, you know, I, I started tutoring biology and chemistry. I, I became a student learning assistant where I help students from first and second year. Mm -hmm. That's um, foundation years, foundation students as well. Mm -hmm. uh, campus tours, yeah. Uh, open days. I used to help a lot in the lab, showing people around. I used to do also um, like private open days. So for families that wanted to do just one to one mm -hmm. open days, I used to do that a lot. I used to help as well during interviews. So in mm -hmm. my university, if you want to apply for nursing, they used to have to come in and do the interview in person. Okay. So I used to help that with that as well. So all those little things, all those little jobs, mm. uh, you know, kind of like build my CV a lot. And Definitely. I could talk about in my cover letter all the skills that the job is looking for. Mm. And also whatever skills you learn in your current degree, mm -hmm. they're so useful. For example, you know, how to use uh, Microsoft Word, how to use this different software that you learn at uni while you're doing yeah, biomed. And, and I think also, before you got the job you have now, you also, like you said, had that job working in a lab through COVID, working in the COVID yeah. PCR lab. Even though you didn't exactly enjoy that job, mm. that was like three months of valuable experience that you were able to put on your CV yeah. to then get you to your next step. 
So even if it's something you don't necessarily want to do, anything you have, whether it's in lab work or working in retail or working as a bartender, whatever it is, they are all skills that can really add to your CV. Definitely, yeah. Okay, so moving on to the last question. What advice would you give to someone who's a bit stuck? They're not entirely sure what they want to do. They feel like they've, they're, you know, they're doing biomed now. They don't want to be a scientist or going to further research or whatever. And I've definitely been through that, you, you know, in that place myself and I'm sure you have as well. What advice would you give to someone who's in that in that state? So I think what mentioned back to the, the last point we'll talk about like work experience, I think it's really important that you get any you know get perspective mm -hmm. of different jobs. Mm -hmm. So then you you know what is out there, what you can possibly do. I thought about it becoming a teacher, I thought about mm -hmm. working in the lab, I thought about doing a PhD and all those little jobs and obviously then I found out about this job and, and I just loved it. But the reason why I got into where I am today is because I did a lot of crappy jobs that mm -hmm. I didn't like, what, what, mm. you know, all the jobs has their pros and cons. I did loads of jobs that I did not enjoy, but I know along the way I've learned different skills. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where you have to ask yourself, you know, what perspect what different perspectives can I get out there mm -hmm. that will help me make a decision on what I really want to do. Obviously this job right now that I'm doing, I, I don't know what it will take me. Right now I'm enjoying it, but I know that at some point mm -hmm. I'll be stuck again, yeah. but I will go back to what things I've done so far, what did I like the most? And that's what I have to ask myself. Mm -hmm. And through that process, you kind of figure out yourself, like where your strength and where your weakness, you know, um, what do you enjoy do, what do, what you don't enjoy, what uh, work environment do you want to be at? Mm -hmm. And I think ask yourself those questions and you have the answer for it. It just, it kind of like life just guides you on what you are meant to do. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds cliche, but... No, it's a really good point. <laughs> I, I definitely, definitely agree with that. Sometimes making a wrong decision is better than making no decision, yeah. right? So when you got that job in the lab and you applied to that COVID PCR lab, you you, you weren't entirely sure if you're going to enjoy it, right? Yeah, you had to go yeah. through that experience to then say, actually, mm -hmm. I know what it's like to work at a lab now. Not really for me. And let me let me pivot away from that. Um, so sometimes that redirection in life from just having that experience is so key. For me personally, while I was doing biomed, I worked as a bartender, I worked as a Mexican uh, chef, I worked uh, on a farm. I literally did so much. I, you know, I did loads of projects in the lab, so I had loads of research behind me. I flew to give conferences in different areas. So I knew very much what it was like working in non-science jobs. Mm -hmm. I knew what it was like to study, you know, because I was already studying. I knew what it was like to work in a lab because I was already doing research in that lab. And that gave me more of an idea of what to do. So if you're not entirely sure, you're confused, as Caroline said, I think the best thing to do would firstly just sit down and think to yourself, does this career that I may, I'm thinking about, does that match my personality and what I want? And if you're not entirely sure, just give it a go. But you know, you don't lose anything, right? You didn't lose anything from working in that PCR job. You got, no, you got paid really no. well. Her pay was super, I don't need to mention it, it was super high during that entire time. Yeah. Your pay was good. You got experience for your next job to make you more uh, valuable in the job market, quote unquote. And you, you know, most importantly, you realized what you want in life and, yeah. and you know, a bit closer to, to where you are now. One last point, go, if you want to it. do like further studies, mm -hmm. uh, for me, for example, when I, I chose to do cancer biology, uh, throughout my second year, I was working in, in the lab doing mm -hmm. open days and a couple of my supervisors, they were doing, you know, research on cancer biology, yeah. on breast cancer, mainly on like uh, women's health. Mm -hmm. And that really brought my interest. And I never mm -hmm. thought in my life I'd be working with, you know, a cancer biology journal specifically on women women's health and that really triggers me and of course you know that stemmed from mm -hmm. being with my supervisors and being there helping and also you know uh, gaining a lot of uh, work experience mm. and that made me decide oh, oh I really want to do a master's on cancer biology because I know that will open different you know different perspectives of life and and you know work mm -hmm. and I'll get different opportunities more opportunities so yeah so I think always grab whatever it's given to you even if it's at uni or whatever pops out on your LinkedIn just apply anyway you never know uh, mm -hmm. I applied to this job I actually never knew because I was getting rejected I remember mm -hmm. that time I was like so upset I was literally getting rejected almost every single day until that one day this mm -hmm. email came through and I was just you know um, so happy yeah and I think like, that's a really good point. And, and I think to end on that point, um, you know, now you're in a position where you're, you know, you're working from home mainly, 
uh, you're working from your laptop, you can work wherever you want in the world. Your salary is pretty pretty decent, I'd say. You, you have that flexibility as well, which um, is amazing. So if you're in your environment right now, and you're thinking, God, I don't want to work in the lab the rest of my life, or I do want to work in the lab the rest of my life. You know, there's so much you can do with biomed degree. It's a very broad degree. You can go into further study, you can go into work like Caroline did. And yeah, I'd say you're, would you say you're pretty happy right now where you are? Yeah, I think biomed was, it was the best choice I did. I'm not trying to be cliche because I always loved science, mm. but I knew that, you know, biomed was the one. I just knew. Okay. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy now, yeah. Especially after doing the masters, I, I became more niche on, on, on a specific subject. And I think that mm -hmm. really made me uh, happier in my career wise. Yeah. Okay. So three years of uh, biomed, one year of your masters and getting to where you are now, was it, was it all worth it in the end, would you say? All the stress you had in your biomed degree and all the coursework and everything? Yeah, I think it was pretty worth it. My job, I mainly use everything I've learned throughout all these four years of study. Mm. So I think it was worth it and Good. I can't complain. And Good. I also love my, the people I work with, you know, the company, they're very like, their work ethics is amazing, you know, if, mm -hmm. so I think that's what makes me really like enjoy the job. Okay. It can be a bit repetitive, but once you get used to it and once mm -hmm. you like get into, get to know people and the flexibility that the company gives you, I think that's, uh, I think it was worth it at the end of the day. Okay, mm -hmm. and definitely for me as well, after doing three years biomed, five years in medical school and now work as a doctor, I, I, I don't see any of the years I spent and the time I spent biomed as waste. I, if anything, it makes me a better doctor because I'm able to fully understand the science behind disease and treatment in, in a way that some doctors might not be able to. Uh, I still did research. I don't do it anymore as much, but I still did research throughout medical school. That um, meant that I was able to publish papers and really boost my application for when I was applying for, the, for, you know, for my job as a doctor. And having also done my biomed degree gave me extra points again when making my application mm. to become a doctor. And if I want to go into I don't know let's say I decide I don't want to do medicine anymore and I want to go into a job like yours you know I, I can hop I can hop ships and go into biomed jobs and I have the flexibility of doing that and also medicine or continue doing a research and scientist um, you know along my day job as a doctor yeah from the both of us if you're in biomed right now not entirely sure what to do hang in there and you know get as much uh, research as you can say yes to as many opportunities as you can and I'm sure you get there in the end Thank you so much for coming on the channel, Caroline. I'm Thanks sure everyone appreciates you <laughs> as well. If you made this far in the video, please make sure to drop a like down below. Make sure you subscribe with notifications on. And before you leave, here are a bunch of videos on my channel that you may find interesting. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.